Archaeologists have long argued about how the world's great monuments were built. Solar power is the only way the Inca stone cutting could have been done. That makes no goddamn sense. But until now, no one had put their theory to the test. You're going to put the obelisk up here and tip it over under the sand and then scoop the sand out these tunnels. Right. It's crazy. In five unique programs, the experts of today put their reputations on the line to solve some of the architectural mysteries of the past. Yeah, I have it. never seen the like of this, and I'm really quite upset. Secrets of Lost Empires begins Wednesday at 9 on BBC Two. No need to get excited. Am I excited? Yeah. I don't bit. mean to. Yeah. Are you suffering from TV blues? BBC Two has the ultimate cure. You can handle this. It's going to be a big one. Docs on the box. Surgery begins Sunday, June the 9th on BBC Two. That's entertainment. On the box tonight at 20 past 10, the best bits of Billy Connolly, 90 minutes of silliest taken from 25 years in the business. And what was it that got him there? Billy Connolly, now on BBC Two, takes us through his life in front of the box. I'm the real don't worry, there isn't. You have to drink responsibly before. Government ship builders, read my lips. And welcome back. <laughs> you know, it's extraordinary. You've been gone such a long time, and it's like a flash to me. <laughs> the entire thing is little clips. At first I thought I was going to get to show huge movies. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, gone with the wind and all quiet in the western front, I won't even show up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the most, they're mostly clips of things that I've liked, you know. I th they call them clips, don't they? Bits. Bits of, of, of things that I've enjoyed over the years. Uh, some are important, some aren't important, some are deeply, deeply unimportant. Uh, some thought they were important, but have turned out not to be. <laughs> some were funny, and are not anymore. <laughs> My sister and I used to sleep in the same room in Partick, and we would have this telly. In the days when television had a vertical and horizontal hold, you know, and if you didn't get it right, this black goalpost would appear. <laughs> People's faces would go up. Oh, wrong, wrong. Right. And the start of the evening was uh, the Grove family, which was a soap. It was the first soap I ever saw. Mu harmonica music by Tommy Riley. And then a Quatermass. And then a, 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 a sports, pro Scott sport, or one of those Scottish sport programs. And, uh, and my father on a Friday night, Friday was unbelievable because he would come home from his work with the, the comics, the comics for the week, the Eagle and the Dandy, the Beano and the Hotspur and all those, girl and those things. And, uh, and he would give us our pocket money and, and he bought sweets as well. They were, they were called sh sugared almonds. And I know now they are called sugared almonds. <laughs> I thought they were sugar dalmonds. <laughs> So this is, this is a bit of equator mass. It's, it's terribly dated, but I'll show you what telly was like then. <laughs> it's all right, they're dead. <laughs> One of the... the next clip I'm going to show you was from a program that was unbelievably popular in Scotland when I was a boy, and it's called The One O'Clock Gang. And it, it was at lunchtime, one o'clock, you know. It was the first daytime television I ever saw. The, the, could people still talk about it today? But I was caught, uh, the, in Glasgow they called it dog in school, playing truant from school. I, I stayed away from school, as I did on a few occasions. And I went to see the one o'clock gang, because uh, it was free in the Theatre Royal. You just queued up and, and you pretended to be with someone, you know, stand behind a fat woman and walk in behind her. <laughs> And, and, uh, and, and I got in, but the camera swept round the audience. <laughs> and I got caught! Right? It's a searchlight. You got me, copper! 
But uh, this is a wee clip from the one o'clock gang here. Sit back and relax. It's the one o'clock gang. It's in the news. It's in the news. Twelve hundred dollars paid for only trimming. It's in the news. It's in the news. It's enough to send your senses really swimming. In Britain, he said haircut, so he just picked up the phone. From America, his barber was immediately blown. Unlike Big Jim, who pays two bob and says, my change, I'm going. You'd have seen it had you read the And the young lady with the beautiful hat on. What's your name? Jean Campbell. From where, Jean? Brixton Cross. That's Nine Hand Street. Where is that? Brixton Cross. The Brixton Cross. I love your hat. Where did you get it? Not the name of the shop. Who gave it to you? Mommy. So, <laughs> the next bit I'm going to show you is a thing uh, you'll recognize immediately. It's Cape Scotland. Uh, a, a real stamp of identity, which it didn't actually... Do. Scotland uh, and Ireland have had a real problem over the years, which gratefully they seem to be getting over. Uh, and that was they kept mistaking the kitsch for the culture, you know. They kept mistaking the shortbread and, and the dancers and the bagpipes, uh, massed military bands, as the culture of Scotland, which it doesn't really, you know. It kind of became the culture and a very strong and identifiable part of the culture. The music did from people like Jimmy Shand, uh, who is a genius, you know, Jimmy Shand and his band. And uh, this, this is a, a, a clip here. I think it's Jimmy's band, it may not be, but Andy Stewart is singing. And Andy Stewart, incidentally, was a brilliant comedian. He's dead now and he died a couple of years ago. But people know him as Donald Where's Your Trousers and all that kind of stuff. But uh, he was also a, a, a superb comedian. But uh, he, here he is singing on the White Heather Club. absolutely brilliant and, and he was a massively talented guy he was really funny on these shows as well as, as singing there was a theater in Glasgow called the Alhambra and it was magnificent it was as nice as this theater a bit bigger I think but beyond belief it went miles back that way it had extraordinary you know equipment and all that it was it was a beauty it used to have a show called the five past eight show because that's when it started five past eight and uh, and the greats of Scottish comedy swarmed through there. I was a schoolboy at the time, and my parents and aunties and stuff would take me, or when we had visitors from America, we would take, we'd, we'd get relations in America, and when they arrived, we would take them to the, as part of the showing them Scotland, or take them to the Alhambra. This is Jimmy Logan and Stanley Baxter. Have a wee look, because they're both brilliant. They're such an influence on me. <laughs> A fag. <laughs> Don't smoke. Oh. Giving it up. <laughs> and I'm desperate to. Oh, you, you know, know, I've always been meaning to ask you, can you walk yet? Sure. But not in front of them. They'd have you walking all day. <laughs> Come on, let's see you try. Go on, let's see you walk. Ach, don't be childish. Isn't that brilliant? That, and that's, that's 30 odd years ago and it stands up perfectly today. Uh, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy Logan was the one on the left and he was a profound influence on me because when I went there as a boy, I, I kind of wanted to be a comedian and I was kind of scared to tell Andy because in Glasgow you should say, I want to be a football player or, or I want to be a marine engineer it was at the time. You could go to sea and all that, you know. And that, uh, I, I actually went for an interview to, to go to join the Merchant Navy. This is the truth. I was with a guy called Devlin, and he, and he was a bit of a wild, 
<laughs> he had sideburns and all that, you know. We were still at school, but he had a big sideies. And we went, <laughs> went up to join the Navy. And, <laughs> and the guy, this happened. The guy says to Devlin, well, can you swim? He says, what's up, you get no boats? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.